To get the HX20 up and running, I need to get a new battery charger, as I've mislaid the old battery charger. The only problem is you cannot use any DC power supply with a DC jack, as there's no voltage or battery protection in the HX20, so choosing the correct power supply is very important. When you look at the schematic in the technical manual for the HX20, you'll see there's only a diode and a resistor that's used to provide protection to the battery in the HX20. The power supply cannot supply much more than 6 volts to the HX20 as this could damage the battery and the computer itself. The most important thing to remember about the battery charger is the centre tip of the DC jack has to be negative. So you have to be careful when choosing a power supply to use as the battery charger. I made sure to use a name brand power supply that I purchased from Radionix, a local vendor. Which you can get one off Amazon or eBay if you like. It has a supply voltage of 6 volts and an unloaded voltage range between 6.5 and 7 volts. The only problem is the DC jack on the power supply is center positive, so this will have to be replaced. If you watched a video on repairing the battery pack, you would have seen that the battery pack is made from four 1.2 volt NICAD recharging batteries. This will provide approximately 4.8 volts to 5.2 volts to the computer when it's running. At first glance you may think the power supply I picked has too high of a voltage for the computer. It is recommended that a 1.2 volt NICAD battery should be charged at 1.5 volts per cell. This would mean the four NICAD batteries in the HX20 should be charged at 6.2 volts. When you consider the voltage drop across the diode and the current limiting resistor, this power supply should provide between 5.9 volts and 6.3 volts to the battery pack. So here's the HX20 in the case that it normally is supplied with. The case is designed to hold the computer as well as a couple of tapes and the power supply. Many people would have modified the case and removed the portion on the left hand side to accommodate the expansion unit for the HX20. So let's take a tour of the HX20. At the back we can see the power socket and the two serial ports. On the right hand side we can see the power switch, the contrast control switch, the various connectors for external barcode reader and tape drive, as well as the eject button for the tape unit itself. On the left hand side we got the 40 pin expansion port, In the tape drive, I have a tape from an original HX20 that I had back in the 80s. In fact, this tape actually is dated 1983. The microcassette drive on the HX20 is ejectable. There's a lever at the back that will let us eject the drive. Once the drive is ejected, it is possible to use ROM modules that will plug into this port. On a later project, I'll be looking at building one of these ROM modules for the HX20 from scratch. So we'll start with unpacking the power supplies that I received from Radionix. I ordered two of them, just in case I wanted to build a spare unit in the future. So we're going to remove the connector that's actually on the power supply as it's molded onto the plug we're going to wire up our own connector that's going to be center negative. Now we just want to confirm which wire is actually the negative wire on the connector. There are two common types of DC jacks, one with a 2.5mm center hole, another one with a 2.1mm center hole. The Epson Hesius 20 uses the DC jack with a 2.1mm center hole. I haven't planned on going through soldering techniques in this video, but if this is something you want me to talk about in the future, let me know in the comments. Thanks.
It doesn't matter how many times I solder a connector, there is always times when I leave the cover off the wire. I had no choice here but to undo the work I'd done and redo the connection. Next thing to do is check the power supply after it's plugged in and make sure that the center is negative. Once it's visit confirmed, then I can plug it into the Epson HS20 and leave it on the desk for a while and hopefully it charges up the battery. Left the HX20 plugged in for about 30 minutes and then I came back. The double beep indicates that the HX20 has powered up, the logic board is working, but I'm getting nothing on the display. I think that's going to be another video. Thank you for watching this video.